Okay, we're back. Trying to get cold around here. Okay, I gotta get this primary going together, among a few other things. Okay, this has got a compensator on it. Big one. It's got a 24 tooth sprocket on it, which is the one you want to use if you want to dry fast. Get that going. Table off for start bringing clean parts over. We got all the clean parts laying over here. So. Okay, this is all the stuff we got to work with here. Okay. already. Uh, 53 already. Okay, so this one had a round jet retainer stuffed in there. Keeps the basket from floating up and down. So there's your basket all cleaned up. Ring gear appears to be good. In the generator baskets the ring gear is recessed in a little bit or toward the outside of the bike. Little. 70 later they're flush with the sensor light slightly this way. FXRs are way the hell over here. So that's how you identify which ones you have. In case you didn't know. Okay. A primary chain look. Appears to have a chain in it. Look it over for any kind of broken links or anything or these bushings in here will crack and get broken, so just look for anything. Look on the outside, then you look on the inside row. Pretty good. Doesn't have too much bow to it. Last test, you throw it on the sprocket over here. And see how much play you got in this way. This one's used, but it's still usable. It's about 50% worn out right now. That's good enough for some more. It'll still work. Okay, we need to check our chain alignment, see where it's at. Whew. how you get a rough idea where you're at. Now there's supposed to be an offset from here to the front. It's supposed to be 200 thou offset as I recall. So if you put a straight edge coming across here, up to here, there should be an offset. Looks like this is in further than this side. I think that's how they're supposed to be. Usually what I do is I put the darn uh, basket up in there and see what we really have. I come out right off the teeth and see what it is. So I'm going to try the straight edge trick. So you have to get a straight edge and, and go measure it. So let me go grab a straight edge. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Here's my straight edge. Instead of a 16 inch scale, it's an 18 inch scale. So push it against the surface. One of the two here. Okay, so you push against this and then the gaps in the front. about the right amount of gap. There's a gap up in there. You push it flat against this and you should be about up in there. It doesn't look like it's 200,000 so it's like it's sticking out too far. It's hard to tell like this. Somewhere on my six inch scale I left someplace. And I see it over there. I lost it. Hiding it from myself, good for that. So 200,000 is two of those lines. <clears throat> About 150 offsets, all we got here.
Yeah. About 150, so a little short. So theoretically, it shouldn't line up. The generator motors, I'm not sure, but they should be the same offset, I would think, no matter what it is. The sprockets are all the same. <clears throat> so, unless they change the height of here, which I don't think they do. Alright, so we'll have to figure out what we got here. So, put together no chain so you can figure that out. So that goes on there. That. You. Starting with, what are we starting with? What are we starting with on the bike? Forster, okay. All right. Yeah. All right, back again. More interruptions there. Keep losing hours and hours here. All right, I want to get the clutch basket put out, so let's get that handled. So basically we got a loose roller style, which is what I like. Caged here. I don't like those long needles. They don't work for shit. All they do is twist and screw the basket this way, then they go that way and they screw it out and they go back and forth like this. If the bearing rotates from one side to the other side, it changes how it goes. So it makes the clutch lock up. It sucks. This one's caged. It always spins true. and It goes wherever it wants to. It just pretty much stays where it is. So this works the best. All right, uh, let's see, where is my grease? Right here. So this here is basically, just put a bunch of grease in here and just start stacking the rollers in. Which are over here. that and then you put a little bit more grease in there to hold them like that and then you move on eventually they're all in there Back to where we already been now. Don't chip it in there. Ah, cold around here. All right, there's all of them. More grease. Okay, so now they're all in there. Oh, 
just lost one. All right. So one went to the floor somewhere. Look for a greasy roller. I see it. Uh, right here. Yeah, one greasy, dirty roller now. I just take it out, wipe it off, no big deal. Okay. A greasy, I need a clean ray roller. The back where it fell out of. Okay. Put it over a basket here, or hub, excuse me. Okay, that's in there. <clears throat> Basket, stick it on top of your hub. And here's your assembly. Okay, now this here goes on next. This keeps it from sliding off. That's what this lip here is. It does it keeps it down? So you have different uh, levels here. You got one, two, three different heights here. So some are one, two, three. Some are A, B, C. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You got to put the three where it holds it all the same for the uneven stud pattern over there. And you want to keep it as low as you can, but you got to have it free rotating. So usually it goes in the B or the number two position. So this one here, this is using one, two, three. So there's a two there. There's a two here and there's a two right there. So let's see if you got to see you got the oddball three pattern. In our case, that's this way. Push it down. There'll be snap ring groove down there. So you look down there for the snap ring grooves and see where you're at. And all uh, right off the bat, I can see it's way the hill up there. So see how the groove is way, way up. So we're going to be in the number one position, the tallest one. <coughs> we probably still be loose, which means this thing's worn quite a bit. Okay, looks like uh, number three is our tallest position. So we'll rotate to number three. Three, three, and three. Three there, yep, that's three. Okay, and that still looks like it's got a lot of clearance on it. It does, it's still got a shitload of clearance. Thing's not doing a lot. Okay. I know I forgot to get snap ring pliers. Okay, here's a little snap rings that hold it all together. See how these are bent? So I'm gonna use gotta get some new ones of these or rebend these. Now, something I can do, I can put a washer in there, a little lay-in washer, and take up the slack, and then put snap rings on top of that. So, you can see what diameter those studs are. Kind of dictates what you got. Probably about three eighths, it looks like, roughly. All right, let me get some hardware, I'll be back. All right, we're back again. Okay, I don't have a washer that's going to help me on that. The end washer is still too big in diameter to fit down inside of these, so it doesn't work. Okay, so number three is our most severe one we can use. Right there. Okay, I got three new snap rings here. These are probably three eighths diameter or something close to it. In. So you put the sharp edge up, 
gets a better bite. See that one's not in there correctly. Should grab a where did my screwdriver go? Snap ring's not dropping in the hole like it's supposed to. Excuse me, it's got drag on it. Hmm. It looks like it's in there, but it's not closing up the gap. That's weird. Alright, the other one's looking good too. Definitely got clearance in it. Doesn't really do anything on this application. It's loose to goose. See, it's got so much slop in here. I think the clutch basket's just made wrong. The, not the basket, the hub. The snap ring groove is way too high. There's nothing I can do about it. Because the retainer doesn't look like it's worn that much. So. Mismatch of components does not match up. Okay, so now I take this and just lay it up on here. Okay, so now both parts are laid up in there. So now we try to put a little straight edge in there and see if I can see if there's anything that looks like it's off. Here's our straight edge. Exactly working very well in here. Yeah, this is not going to work. It's not even staying there where it belongs anyway. All right. Let's see. What can I do to measure? Don't know. Get in there to do much. Um, maybe I can use my stretch in some way in there. This bike has no room. Uh, nope, no way of telling. Can't even measure the depth of where the gear is at because you can't get to the gear. Probably eyeball it maybe. I don't know how I can do it. If I put this on the back side of the gear. Even that's kind of a questionable at best. Ah, there's what I can do. About a half inch away. Up there. Yeah, it's a sloppy way of doing it. We're within that fifty thousand, but the problem is I can't tell if we're more or less than what we need to be. Let's see, I do like that. I do like this. I'm on the wrong side of the measure two. Right there. Yeah, about two 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 five maybe. Once 
again, it's a lousy way of measuring it. about the same number. Not a very accurate way of measuring, but it's somewhere in the ballpark. Alright, I just have to call it good enough. I have no good way of measuring it. I don't feel like spending more time doing it. We're just going to say it's good enough. Put the chain on there and see if there's any binding. If it's bound up, we know it's wrong. But as far as I can tell, it's pretty close. Excuse me, it should be 50 thou off. But we have clearance on the chain. See, when you have a sprocket on a chain, you have free play. See this free play right here? They both have it, so you can have 50 thou off, and it would, there's enough room in here to take it up. So basically, if you're within 50, you're still good. But you don't like taking advantage of that if you don't have to. Okay, so we're going to go with it, say it's good enough. Okay, we've got a key right here to put on. It's right here. Where my little hammer at? Probably nowhere near where I'm at. There it is. Get that all the way in. Sleeve retainer lock, no, not sleeve retainer, a little bit of red Loctite. Down the threads here. And put a little bit on the taper just for the hell of it. It'll make it really hard to get off, hopefully. Well, if you drive hard, it sticks on better. Okay, so. This has to go up into the assembly. So put the sprocket here onto the bike. So down over here. This right here. And keyway straight up. So you put the keyway and the hub straight up, and that's how you put it on. Oh. On yet. I need some lubricant on that. You don't want this compensator to be running dry. It can cause a little issues. Add a little bit of grease on that. hub on there you can actually uh, see the end of the key. Uh, uh. See the end of the key right in the shaft there. So yeah stay on. So that means it's good. If you can see if you saw the key that would look like this where you see the top of the key that means it's in there sideways. That'd be bad. Okay that looks good. See what lines up there. Goes over there. Should be good. Okay, so now we have a snap ring. Or not a snap ring. We got a lock tab right here. A little tick goes in the hole there. And usually that disappears when I torque it down anyway, but we'll pretend it's going to work, right? Okay, get that in there. Stick it up in there where it belongs. Yeah. There we go, right there. All right. And the nut's right there. Put a new seal in the nut. We have a new seal right there in the nut. So we can put a little bit of grease on the other shaft. Right there. 
on the tip also. A little bit inside the seal if we can get in there. Not really. Okay. You know, the trick with this is to tighten the nut up without losing the lock. Falling out. If you have the zip gun, it falls out. If you just go down slowly like this, just by turning it, it usually gets half the time will stay put. Okay, it could stay it in there. Yep. We're in there. Leave it that way. Okay, goes there. Where's my bolt at? This is your correct bolt, tensioner bolt. Holds it all together. Put a grease on the thread so they don't go up. T nuts on the back side, you lift it up with a screwdriver usually. Get up where you need to be with it. This is too short. That's long enough. Let me see the T nut. hardly ever screw with you. It's screwing with me. And it is dropped. Yeah. Bike. That's be nice. It's screwing me 100% all the time. It'd be nice. Chains definitely stretch a lot. That's twice as much as it should go up. Ah, that's because it fell off the tank over here. There we go. Yeah, that's much better now. Still loose, but not nearly as much. Spin it, you'll see where the tracking's at. Wasn't all the way in. Spin around for a little bit. Wasn't all the way out either. So it's not all the way in, not all the way out. That's good. Basically, I spun it, let it find the center. You push in, it had a gap. You push out, it had a gap. So that means it's in the middle, it's floating, which means it's in a good spot. If it was binding on one side or the other, you would see it. So that's good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up now. I'm going to hit the button a couple times on that. This is backwards thread. Yes, that was about 50 foot pounds. Probably a couple of those in front of that number would be good. Okay, this turns good. Basket's not wobbling, that's really good. You know, things wobble like this, especially on new bikes. This one's almost dead perfect, I like that. That's a good one. Okay, where's my lock tab at? Looks like that one right there is a good one to use. Uh, 
Uh, it's got light on it anyway, it's like you really need it. Okay, that's good. Alright. I'm going to put the compensator on. Actually, we don't have to put the compensator on just yet, so do we? We don't have a clutch in this bike yet, so no way of releasing it. like I'm going to pull on that lever back there to make the clutch release. I have no way of disengaging the clutch right now very easily. Oh well.